All right, before we talk about the vasopressing medication administration via the IV pump, I want to talk about some of the most important warnings the manufacturer has put out. So the first warning is the Med System 3 is designed to stop fluid flow under alarm conditions other than low battery and KVO. Periodic patient monitoring must be performed to ensure the infusion is proceeding as expected. So what this warning entails is basically anytime the alarm uh, sounds, the medication administration has stopped. So the patient is not getting the medication they're supposed to get. This becomes problematic if the patient is intubated and is receiving propofol infusion. Additionally, this becomes problematic if the patient is getting a vasopressing medication such as levofed, uh, epinephrine, and dibutamine. So as you could see, if a timely corrective action is not taken immediately, uh, the patient may wake up and start pulling on the tube if they're on propofol infusion or you may see blood pressure deterioration and patient may go into cardiac arrest. So this is uh, key to remember that as soon as the alarm sounds, you need to quickly uh, troubleshoot it and take corrective action in a timely manner. Next warning is the Med System 3 is a positive pressure delivery system capable of developing positive fluid pressures to overcome widely varying resistances to flow encountered in practice, including resistances to flow imposed by small gauge catheters, filters, and intra-arterial infusion. It is neither designed nor intended to detect infiltrations and will not alarm under infiltration conditions. So you need to be very diligent in assessing uh, patients as far as where the access points are for their IVs and checking for edematous raised areas and palpating those areas to confirm that it is uh, infiltration is occurring or extravasation is occurring and discontinuing the infusion immediately. So keep checking those uh, antecubital fossa. Uh, maybe it's on the forearm. Um, all the access points need to be continuously checked during transport. Next morning is the hospital personnel must ensure compatibility of drugs as well as performance of each channel as part of the overall infusion. Potential hazards include drug interactions, inaccurate delivery rates, inaccurate pressure alarms, and nuisance alarms. So obviously, before initiating any IV therapy, you need to confirm uh, five patient rights. In addition, you need to confirm with the nursing staff or the physician uh, if certain medications are compatible to be infused simultaneously together. If they're not, do not infuse them together because deleterious effects will ensue. And again, um, you know, make sure you input the correct rates and correct uh, dosages ordered as per the clinicians at the sending facility. Following warning is the use of positive displacement infusion devices ported together with gravity flow infusion systems into a common IV site may impede the flow of common gravity only systems, affecting their performance. Hospital personnel must ensure performance of common IV site is satisfactory under these circumstances. So if you have a medication that is being infused via a positive displacement device, such as Med System 3, uh, made by Carefusion, uh, you see here we have drug, IV pump. So imagine this is the drug going by Med System 3, and the gravity NS fluid is just a free-flowing uh, system uh, with a bag just hanging um, on the pole. So if you connect both of them together via wipe connection, the gravity NS fluid may not flow uh, with positive displacement medication or fluid going at the same time. Uh, the thing you got to keep in mind is whenever you see a piggyback administrations in the hospital, both of those medications and fluids are running via the hospital IV pump. Uh, they're usually ported together either into the same cassette or they have two cassettes insertions in their IV pump. So none of their piggyback medications are actually flown via gravity infusion. Both of them are flown via a positive displacement device. So keep this in mind uh, whenever you see a piggyback uh, medication. Uh, the next warning is uh, for parallel infusions. So there's no counterindications regarding the use of Med System 3 with any other positive displacement infusion device when ported together into a common IV site location. So imagine if you're on a transport where you have to utilize more than one pump and usually in those cases you'll probably have a, a nurse physician team accompany you for those transports 
So if uh, you have the drug IV pump going via med system three pump, and the nurse or the physician uh, elects to connect their pump, let's say it's Baxter pump, to the Y port and administer a medication that's obviously compatible to be infused simultaneously, they can do so without any deleterious effects, and it's actually approved by the manufacturer. All right. Uh, so again, this is all of these are scans from the manufacturer's instructions, and here is a scan to prepare for infusion. Prepare a solution container in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. A syringe can be used as the container for the IV fluid to be infused. Syringe sizes from 20 cc to 60 cc, such as BD and Monoject brands, can be used. So, uh, 20 to 60 cc syringe, meaning anything in those ranges, uh, 20 to 60 can be used and depending on the flow rate that the medication is going uh, you may elect to either use a 20 cc syringe or a 60 cc syringe for example if you have fentanyl that's going at 5 mLs an hour you could use a 20 cc syringe given your transport uh, does not exceed 4 hours and if something is going at say at 25 to 30 cc an hour you may elect to use a 60 cc syringe and keep in mind that BD and Monoject brands are the ones that the manufacturer recommends uh, to use. Here is a picture of a BD brand name 60cc syringe with a lure lock tip. You must have the lure lock tip because you're going to connect your half set uh, to the lure lock. Um, and this is a picture how it comes um, in the package. This is a Monoject brand 60cc syringe, again with a lure lock tip. And you would have to employ a low lock connection uh, to connect to your half set. The following warning is it is important to prime the set properly to, um, to eliminate air bubbles. And take uh, due diligence and take your time to prime each set carefully and slowly. Uh, doing so will eliminate all the problems that you may encounter with all the air, air uh, sensor alarms. In addition, uh, uh, Carefusion makes model 8631A syringe holder. It's basically a case that your pump is housed in and it accommodates uh, syringes to be transported together. So, um, as I said previously, prime your set slowly and especially so with medications that are very thick or foam up easily. So here we have um, two known medications that if you don't prime your set slowly, it will give you trouble and are known to cause uh, different types of alarms to go on into the Carefusion alarm, uh, IV pump. So whenever you're going to use propofol, take your time and prime it slowly. When I say slowly, as soon as you connect your set, open the clamp slowly and take several minutes to make sure there's no bubbles remaining in the set and all the air is evacuated from the drip chamber as well. Same goes with amiodarone whenever it's infused via uh, IV bag. Uh, again, take special care not to agitate the bag too much. Um, and uh, do not throw it around uh, if you don't have to. So try to keep it still and prime your line slowly. Here is a case. Um, and here you see a 60C syringe uh, connected via Velcro strap. In the back of this uh, case, there is a D-ring through where the Velcro strap hooks through, and then you could safely secure the 60C syringe to the side. There's a, another Velcro strap on the other side of the syringe, so it could house uh, two or even three uh, syringes if you just slide them together and secure them in place. Here I have a actual uh, programming page uh, slide. So I want to talk about uh, this here because we have abbreviations that are showed here and you may not uh, intuitively know what, what they are. So we'll start at the top of the page. Select the channel A and status line A. This is the notes, the channel you're in. You have three channels on this pump. You have A, B, or C. And here you clearly see that uh, the selected channel is A. Following that, we have the primary rate. And that's your infusion rate, the medication or the fluid is going. On this cur current programming page, it's set at 25 mLs an hour. And this will depend upon um, your medication, 
or your fluids and the patient needs. Following that, we have uh, volume remaining. The abbreviation is VR. This is uh, a measure how much fluid is remaining in the bag or the syringe that you will take. So if I came to the facility and I freshly filled 60C syringe with the medication, volume remaining would be 60 ml. And if you had a bag of, let's say, normal saline that you were just going to give and it was 250 ml, you will input 250 ml in, uh, in that volume remaining um, box. Following that, we have time remaining. Abbreviation is TR. The time remaining is usually automatically calculated by the AV pump. And the way it makes that calculation, it takes the primary rate and it accounts for volume remaining that you input it, and it automatically gives you time remaining. This is a good um, parameter to keep in mind, especially when you're moving um, time-sensitive medications and medications that are keeping certain uh, hemodynamic parameters in place. So, for example, if, let's say, um, you had um, vasopressing medication going at 25 mLs an hour, and there was only... 20 mLs an hour remaining in the fluid container, you may want to speak with the nurse or the physician so they could put another order um, in the pharmacy to give you a fresh bag if your transport is going to take more than an hour. So keep that in mind whenever uh, you're dealing uh, with long tr uh, distance transports and whenever you will encounter traffic on the road or it's just bad weather. Uh, always try to obtain sufficient amount of medication and probably uh, error on the side of having too too much versus too little because you never know um you know what what will you will encounter on the road uh, following that we have volume infused the abbreviation is vi uh, this is how much uh, volume you have administered during transport this is one of the most important parameters i usually record in my acr and i inform the clinicians at the receiving facility uh, the nurse and the physician how much volume of medication I gave and milligrams I gave. So this uh, aspect gets documented uh, all, all the time for every medication and for every fluid. Uh, following that, we have date and time. And following that, we have some soft key prompts. And those will be addressed in the hands-on demonstration videos. Uh, Med System 3 uh, by CareFusion uh, facilitates six uh, device types. Or modes of administration and these are preset parameters that accommodate specific clinical applications we have general purpose neonatal control pressure operating room and general purpose 2 as well as operating room 2 here i have a chart with all the modes and all their parameters uh, i just want to focus your attention on the neonatal uh, mode and if you noticed uh, air in line alarm threshold it's 50 microliters, and the rate range that this mode facilitates is 0 0.1 to 99.9 .9 mLs an hour. If you notice, these are very narrow ranges, uh, and suffice to say, because it's a neonatal population, you want to have narrow parameters as far as your uh, thresholds and your rates. And if you take a look at all other modes, it gives you a much wider ranges of uh, uh, amount of fluid you could administer, and the threshold is really raised much higher uh, because it assumes that you're dealing with an adult population and not uh, neonatal. So here I want to cover the most important alarms, advisories, and prompts. Uh, if you want all-inclusive list, please download the manual. And the manual will be on my website, criticalcareift.org. And if you want the chart that was previously shown on the screen, that manual contains the chart, so you could download it, print it, or put it on your smartphone and open it up whenever you need to. So uh, the first alarm we go over here is air in line. And the meaning is air detected in fluid pathway during infusion or the air sensor is dirty. Usually, uh, you will encounter this alarm if you don't take the time to prime your set slowly and diligently. Uh, if you take your time and do everything you're supposed to do, this should not be something that you encounter frequently. And the corrective response will depend upon um, 
uh, what it's what's what's causing the alarm to go off so like i said my advice take your time prime it slowly and you should not have this during transport uh, low battery the meaning is minimum of 30 minutes of battery power remaining uh, connect the ac adapter cord power to the instrument and plug into wall outlet so uh, usually you don't want uh, low battery come on, coming on at any moment in time uh, whenever you're conducting your transports all the devices that could be plugged into ac should be plugged in and be on your inverter and when we're not using the instruments it should be connected to the inverter being charged so the only time uh, these devices should be off is whenever you actually moving the patient from the ambulance to the hospital or from the hospital to your ambulance and if you're anticipating long uh, delays just take the ac cord with you to the floor and while you wait just plug in uh, all your uh, equipment and have them charging on the floor following that we have check fluid side possible upstream uh, restriction to flow so sometimes uh, uh, certain pumps are already pre-programmed uh, for this alarm to go on it assumes that you have uh, roller clamps and uh, that are engaged and uh, as a provider you, you basically did not uh, uh, unclap them so sometimes you may have to confirm uh, and press start again to resume the infusions but again whenever you're transitioning make sure all the roll clamps and all the uh, stopcocks are open and nothing is uh, blocked following that we have patient side occluded the downstream restriction to flow so um, this is um, not as often seen as some of the others but you'll have this alarm if uh, you forgot to uh, open a stopcock or the patient is bending their arm uh, forcibly and the uh, IV is getting kinked. So the way you troubleshoot this uh, alarm, begin from the patient and then work your way towards the pump. So look at the patient's uh, IV site location, make sure the arm is not bent, it's not kinked, uh, no clamps are engaged, and then work back to the IV pump. All right, so screen, uh, is too light or dark to read with instrument on this is usually a contrast soft key that you could press and adjust the contrast to your specifications one other thing i want to mention here you'll notice some care fusion pumps have the green lcd and some have the white and black lcd uh, from what i understand there's no way of actually changing that via pump itself and uh, i believe that the manufacturer with different batches of care fusion uh, produce some of them with green LCD and some with white LCD and this is just the way it is and there's no way to change that on the pump itself. So this concludes all the advisories and alarms and I have video tutorials um, regarding the vasopressing medications and how to transition time-sensitive medications following this video.